Hello everybody. Today is Friday, September the 2nd. Can you believe it's been almost 10 years since 9-11? One decade ago. And it seemed like yesterday. Can you still remember what you were doing? I remember exactly what I was doing. If you can remember what you were doing, either uh, I'd like to see a, a video comment or just, just leave a comment uh, below the video for my YouTubers. And on Facebook, you can do the same thing. Because that's something that's always going to be interesting. You know, the person can tell me the same story over and over, but it's, it's still it's interesting. And I remember on 9-11, I was off from work that day. And uh, the thing that I think about a lot is uh, Stephanie had just come back from California. That's my daughter. She had just flown back from California. That was her very first plane trip. And I worried about her the whole way down there, you know. And then I worried about her coming back. But she had just got back a day, maybe two days before 9-11. Uh, and I was really worried about her being on the plane by herself. And then after 9-11 happened, oh, I was thinking to myself, what if she'd come back on that day? I was, it just traumatized me. But I remember she called me that evening and she's like, you don't have to worry about me flying anymore. But she's since flown. But that's neither here nor there. But on the morning of 9-11, uh, I woke up like 3 o'clock in the morning and I just, I couldn't go back to sleep. And that was unusual for me. I just, I laid there and I tossed and I turned. And and so, uh, Joe was uh, the manager of Food Line at the time. And Food Line was open 24 hours. So I tried calling him. I called his store and he wasn't picking up the phone. And I called several times and he wouldn't pick up the phone. And here it was, it's three, going on 3.30. So my husband was at work. And so uh, I called my husband uh, at work. Um, he was out doing some parking lots. He striped parking lots and did roof inspections and this, that, and the other. So he drove his company truck with his company phone. So I called him on his phone. And he was like, well, what are you doing awake at this hour? And I said, well, I just can't sleep. And he was like, well, did you try to call Joey? I said, yeah, because he knows I like to talk to Joey when I can't sleep. I said, but Joey's not answering the phone. So I talked to my husband for a little while. And then uh, I asked him, I said, well, when you come home, stop by McDonald's and bring me some breakfast because I'm still going to be awake. And he said, okay. So I hung up from talking to him and I called Joey back. Well, Joey still wasn't answering, so I called Joey's cell phone. And Joey answered his cell phone, and he said he had been towards the back of the store. That uh, He'd been getting a snake out of the store. There was a snake in the store. Text from Antoinette. Anyway, uh, and there was customers in the store, too, but he said uh, that he had he was going back to an aisle or something there was a snake he had to take um, one of those cones wet floor sign cones and trap the snake put it under there and then scoot it all the way through the back of the store through the stock room and open the door and get the snake out of the store so he was busy doing that on 9 11 and so i talked to him for a little while and i laid there and i was trying my best to go back to sleep and i just couldn't and I was watching Judge Judy, which I really don't like to watch Judge Judy because she pisses me off, you know, just, mm. but anyway. And then they came on with breaking news and said that a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center while I'm laying there looking at it, and you can see all the smoke, and I'm thinking, oh my God, all those poor people, you know, got on that plane this morning and didn't know that something was going to go wrong and they were going to crash. And I thought about Stephanie being on a plane just a couple days before that. And then while I was watching it, I saw the other one when it hit. And I came straight up in the bed. Just straight up in the bed. I said, oh my God. And so, um, it just so happened, something that had happened to my husband's radio in his truck. So he wasn't able to hear any news on his way home. And so when he got home, uh, I was telling him what was going on. And, he stood back there in the bedroom. He, I mean, he literally stood there while I sat on the bed. 
we watched TV for a long time, and he bought me my breakfast from McDonald's, and, and I couldn't even eat my McDonald's breakfast. I just, I couldn't eat it. And we were like glued to the TV all day. But there was something that I wanted to cook that night for supper. I had my mind set on it for uh, a couple of days, and I knew I was going to have to get out and go to the store that day to get it. And I got ready to go to the store about 2 o'clock, and then I said, I don't want to go to the store by myself. I can't leave that. I was actually too scared to leave the house. And so uh, my husband had told me then, well, let me go get my shoes and my shirt on, and, and I'll take you to the store. And I was going to do that, and then I thought, you know what? He's been at work since 1 o'clock this morning. He don't need to drive me out to the store when I can take my own car and go. So I told him, I said, no, that's okay. I, I, I can do this by myself. He was like, well, I'll be glad to take you, honey. You don't have to go out there by yourself. But I said, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to take me to work tomorrow? Are you going to pick me up tomorrow just so I won't have to be alone? I said, i got to go out there by myself. So I managed to go to the store. But when I left the store on the way home, I called him and I talked in the car all the way home. Because I just... It was just such a scary day. And I remember that that was all that was on the TV and stuff. And, and it was just traumatizing. Just traumatizing. And it's been 10 years since that day. And so much has happened in the past 10 years. I mean, so much has happened. Since my husband has since died. My mom has died. Uh, my dog, Sir Duke, has died. I've had, I think, three uncles and two aunts, three aunts, that have passed. And, and my cousin Denise lost her son, Corey. So there's been a lot of deaths. The economy's gone in the shitter. Uh, and we've got the first black president. That's made history. Katrina. Look at how many lives were devastated by Katrina. You know, there's been other hurricanes and such, but, but none really as major as Katrina. So, and then just uh, here in Greensboro alone has been so many changes. Greensboro is always changing. You can come to Greensboro and leave and come back the next year and everything's going to look different because it's like nothing ever stays the same. I can't tell you how many changes there's been since I've been down here. <clears throat> and I've been down here since 94 and I still have a hard time getting around sometimes because I'll still get lost you know the roads are always changing but I love Greensboro and I'll never leave Greensboro I'll stay here forever but um, so <clears throat> I think I'm a co-worker of mine had strep I hope that's not what I'm getting but anyway, so what all has changed for you in the past decade? Me, I still live in the same house. I still work at the same job. So that, in fact, has not changed. And sometimes it will seem like so long ago, and then it just seemed like yesterday, all at the same time. I know that happened in 2001. And like I said, my husband died in 2002. And so it's hard to believe that it's coming up on nine years since he passed. He died in December, December the 9th. So it was right before Christmas. And then my mom died in 2005. And she died on New Year's Eve of 2005. And I miss them both very, very much. But just think of all the people that lost their loved ones and stuff on 9-11. And uh, I'll probably watch the uh, special that they have on. I watch it every year, and it's basically the same thing, but I still watch it. And I've got the, uh, I got a DVD with all that on there, too. But all the people that lost their loved ones. And this one woman, it was her first day on the job. She was killed in 9-11. And I'm not sure if it's the same one, but there was another woman who had just found out the day before that she was pregnant. And uh, she died in the towers. So, you know, 
you can truly go at any time. All those thousands of people that got on those planes and that got up and took a shower and got dressed to go to work, got in their cars or their taxis and went off to work and got on the elevators and went to their office without a care in the world, never knew that they wasn't coming back up. And can you imagine the fear, not just of the people that were trapped, but of the people as they came down those stairs to get out of that building? Can you imagine getting out of the building and then knowing half the people didn't get out? That would be an awful feeling. That'd be an awful feeling to have to live with for the rest of your life. And then the people that were still on those stairs that could hear the rumble of those buildings falling. And look how many bodies have never been found. Now that's sad. That's really, really sad. So I guess we should all be thankful for what we have and thankful for every day. Because you never know if you're going to have it tomorrow. That's just the way it is. So, uh, on a lighter note, tell me some of your 9-11 uh, stories and, and what you were doing and what you remember. Let's see, some of the kids that weren't even born on 9-11 are probably, are born right at 9-11. They would be what now, in the third grade, the fourth grade maybe? So, you know, they're studying this in history class. Anyway, so tell me some of your 9-11 stories, and um, until next time, bye-bye.